In this video, I will try to explain what kind of student organizations there are in Finland and why they're such an essential part of your student experience. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. If this is the first time we're meeting, my name is Oliver and I'm a master's student in economics at Aalto University in Finland. And on this channel we talk about education and early career development, specifically here in Finland. So if you're new here, do consider subscribing. Before we jump into the video, let me thank Aalto University for also sponsoring this video. I've done both my bachelor's and master's degrees at Aalto and I really recommend that you guys consider applying there in the next application round. For more information about studying at Aalto, check the links in the description box below. All right, so student organizations, they have a huge role in Finland. Unlike some of you guys might actually think, Finnish student organizations are not only there to organize parties and activities, but they have a much wider societal impact. To understand this and everything that is happening around these organizations, we really need to first understand what kind of organizations there are and how they're structured. I will break down the different organizations into multiple levels that basically indicate the hierarchy in which these organizations operate in. Please take into account that this is a very general look at the different organizations. I could talk about this topic for hours, but I simply want to give you guys a general overview so that you can actually understand how these different organizations benefit you as a student. In order to make any sense of this, let's start from the top of the pack and let's talk about student unions. So student unions have a long history in Finland. The first student union to be established was the Student Union of the University of Helsinki, which was founded already in 1868, which makes it uh, just a hair over 150 years old. Throughout their history, student unions have been extremely active both in the Finnish political landscape, landscape and the local business life, pushing for changes that benefit their members in each period of time. Student unions are actually the only student organizations in Finland that are mandated by law. The Finnish law states that every single university has to have a student union. For example, the student union for Aalto University is the Aalto University Student Union and so on. As of the recording of this video in early 2020, the law also states that every university student has to be a member of the respective student union of their school. So why I'm mentioning this is because there has been a lot of public debate about this mandatory membership and it is possible that uh, at some point in the future there might be some changes to this. The law also states that each student union shall have a board of directors, which usually takes care of the day-to-day -day operation of the union, and a representative council, latter which is chosen in elections during which current, current members choose a group of their peers to represent their voice in the union. So, what do student unions actually do? Well, in general, they function as the advocates for their members, both at the university level, as well as in the public higher discourse. Their overall goal is to support their members and their interests, both in the public and private sectors. For example, lobbying decision makers on new laws that may have an impact on students and their lives, and building relationships on the private sector to improve their members' future career opportunities. So in addition to these and many other tasks, student unions also coordinate the national student healthcare system through the Finnish Student Health Service, which is more commonly known as the YTHS, which is the abbreviation of the Finnish name Ylioppilaiden Terveydenhoitosäätiö. I will talk more about student healthcare in Finland in future videos, so do make sure you're subscribed to the channel and don't miss these updates. In addition to their official tasks, student unions also do organize a large amount of extracurriculum activities, such as parties, sports and cultural events. But while the unions do take part in organizing these type of events, more importantly, they actually fund a huge amount of smaller organizations like clubs and guilds that actually organize the bulk of each year's activities. Let's talk more about these in just a second. So to finance all of their activities, Finnish student unions have throughout history established large portfolios of businesses, both in the for-profit and in the non-profit markets. This has allowed some individual unions to grow massive amounts of wealth that is then used for projects benefiting their members. For example, a large junk of student apartments in Finland are actually provided either directly through student unions or through companies that they, the unions have established. 
Just to give you a bit of perspective to the wealth of some of these unions, the student union of the University of Helsinki alone has assets of over 200 million euros. So in addition to the university level student unions, we need to talk about the National Union of University Students in Finland or SYL. So the National Union, established in 1921 and with over 130,000 members, is the advocate for all university students in Finland. The union has an extensive policy paper detailing their main goals. The link is in the description if you want to read more about it. But to summarize, the National Union is basically the loudest voice for students across the country, being especially active in the national political discussion. So to put the political power of SYL into context, throughout its history it has been able to push through a number of legislation that benefits all students in Finland. Just to quickly mention two of them, in the 1970s SYL was successful in lobbying a law on a national meal support, which basically provides all higher education students in Finland with meals costing only 2 euros 60 cents a piece. In addition, they were able to negotiate a national student discount for public transportation that in some cases is up to 50% of the market price. All right, going down one level below student unions, we have the so-called special status associations. So special status associations are basically organizations that represent the students of one or several degree programs. So for example, there are close to 30 different special status associations that operate under the Aalto University Student Union. These include, for example, the guilds for mechanical engineers, chemistry, physics and architecture, and the associations for Aalto University business students, doctoral students, and students of art design and architecture. All right, so you might ask, what's the difference between guilds and these degree associations? Well, to simplify, in practice, they're basically the same thing. But historically speaking, only the associations for engineering students have been named as guilds. The purpose of these two types of associations is basically the same, to represent the students of a specific degree program. All right, so the next level of organizational structure is committees and subcommittees. These are actually organizations that do not exist under every single student union, but they might rather be built under a single student association. So for example, in the case of the Association for Aalto University Business Students, which I'm the member of, there are six different committees that operate directly under the board of directors of the business association. So these committees basically have been assigned with specialized tasks and they have their own annual budgets to work from. These committees include, for example, a tutor committee in charge of coordinating and training new tutors for new freshmen. Also, there is a committee for corporate relations that is in charge of getting new corporate partners for the business students. And then we have committees, for example, for cultural affairs, master's students, student well-being, and academic relations at the School of Business. In addition to these committees that I just mentioned, business students at Aalto also have three separate subcommittees, which are then specialized in organizing different type of events for the business students. The most relevant for you guys would be the international subcommittee, which is basically responsible for the entertainment of the exchange and international degree students at the School of Business. Their task is to make your stay in Finland as unforgettable as possible. So finally, at the bottom of the organizational structure, we have different student clubs. So taking into account all the different organizations that we've talked about, student clubs, in my personal experience, are the most important type of organization for most students in Finland. This is because A, they're extremely visible in your day-to-day -day life, and B, they organize the most amount of different events, activities, and hobby opportunities during your studies. The cool thing is that you can either simply take part in these activities the clubs organize around the year, or if you're interested, you are most welcome to jump on board and actually start organizing these events yourself. So just to give you an idea of the amount of different clubs that you can take part in, just within Aalto University, there are over 200 different associations, ranging from sailing clubs, to sports, to debating societies, to music and theater, to craft beer, wine and whiskey clubs, to skiing, to shooting, and of course, since we're in Finland, a sauna society. So basically there's something for everyone. And the cool thing is 
If you cannot find a club or a society that you are interested in, you can simply establish your own and apply for funding from your student union to actually start operating. All right, so that's a lot of information for one video. Thank you so much for anyone who stuck all the way to the end. If you have anything you want to know about student organizations or how they actually operate, please let me know in the comment section below and I will be glad to give you some more details about the topic. Before we end this video, let's answer some of your questions from my earlier videos. So in my last video, which was about the top five things about Alto University, uh, Spring Nuance asks, so will taking courses from other fields count as credits towards your degree? Yes, but do take into account that this was specifically in the context of Aalto University. Uh, the cool thing about Aalto University is that it is actually not just a single school, it actually consists of six different schools. Since we have these different schools and these different disciplines, you can actually take courses from the other schools that then count as credits towards your degree. So this is a really nice way of getting a multidisciplinary degree for yourself. So in the same video, Marcel actually asked me to tell a few words about guilds and the clubs, specifically at Aalto University. This video was supposed to give you a general overview, and I will actually try to focus more on uh, specific guilds and clubs in Aalto University in future videos. So please do consider subscribing to the channel. There is just way too many clubs to actually cover in, in one, two or even five videos. So I might actually make a series out of it and then try to continue it throughout the year. Right, so finally, Kirs asked, what is the possibility of getting awarded a scholarship when applying for an undergraduate degree as a foreigner? Hadn't found any statistics about this. Basically, the answer is, I don't know. Traditionally, the universities actually don't even publish these statistics. Some might. I don't know if they do. What I do know is that I've been trying to look for the numbers quite extensively and I haven't found any. So that would indicate that they don't actually give them to the public. Anyways, that is everything for me this time. As mentioned, if you have anything to ask about this or any other topic related to studying or building your early career in Finland, write them down in the comment section down below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks again for watching guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.